it's me again, I'm back with another tutorial. Now that you know who I am, there's no need for formal introductions. So let's get started. This is a simple duckbill style face mask for the use of filters. It is only made of one layer of fabric. This pattern requires you to make vice binding. The top layer covers over the bottom layer to help keep the filter in place. It is shaped to give some room between the lips and the fabric. The top and the bottom edges are bound using vice binding. The binding allows easy insertion of a nose bar if you decide to use one. Some edges are overlocked while some are turned under. It is made of three main pattern pieces. The edges are bound instead of folding over and edge stitched to eliminate bulk. This face mask uses the same pattern but this one is made of two layers of fabric. Feel free to modify my patterns to adapt to your projects. Today I am going to show you how to make the one layer design. Make sure you pre-wash all your fabrics before starting the project. This will eliminate any fabric shrinkage in the future. I have decided that the fabric does not require any interfacing like my previous tutorials. Remember to notch the fabrics. On six of the main fabric pieces, overlock all the curved edges. First sew the two main fabric pieces together. Placing the right side touching the right side, sew the curved and using 1cm seam allowance, that's 3 8 of an inch in US. Backstitch the beginning and backstitch the end. Now sew the other two pairs. Exactly the same process, right on the curved edge. Chain them together as you sew to save thread. Open the seam and run your fingernail down it. This will make it lie flat. This eliminates pressing with an iron. Flip it over and top stitch on the right side. Sew down both sides of the seam. This will hold the seam allowance down. Back stitch the beginning. Hold the fabric with the thumbs under will help because it is a curved seam and it doesn't lie flat. Holding the fabrics on both sides apart as I sew. I do this fairly close to the seam. Anything around 2 to 3 millimeters is fine. That's about 1 8th of an inch in US. And backstitch the end. Repeat on the other pattern pieces. Now we are going to finish the edges. You can overlock this then turn under before edge stitch but I am going to fold 5mm then another 5mm resulting in 1cm that's 5 8 of an inch overall move your needle if it helps back stitch to hold the fabric down then fold with right hand left hand run down the seam to help tuck it under press down and sew Repeat until you have completed the edge stitch. Back stitch. Repeat on the remaining fabric pieces. Make sure your fabric pieces are the right way round.
It is time to assemble. Make sure your fabric pieces are the right way around. Wrong side touching the wrong side. Raw edges matching up. Pin first at the seam in the centre. Repeat on the other side. You can easily tell if the patterns are matching by looking at the notches. Match up the raw edges and sew a basting stitch along the raw edge. This is just to hold the fabrics together and you won't see it. I use 3mm seam allowance. That's about 1 8th of an inch. Repeat on the other side. Now we are going to baste on the sides. Make sure the top flap covers over the bottom one. Baste about 3mm, that's 1 8th of an inch, away from the raw edges. Repeat on the other side. Double check it is overlapped properly. Snip and tidy up any loose spreads and unsightly edges. We're going to attach the bias binding to the edges. If you haven't already made it, click on the link and I will show you how it's made. The bias binding should be 4cm wide. Place the right side touching the right side of the mask, with a bit of overhang on the edge. Match the edges. So 1cm seam allowance. Backstitch. and backstitch. Now pull the bias binding out. Fold so the edges are touching. Fold again. The main thing is the edge must sit just over the stitch line underneath. Pin in place. Continue down the edge. Make sure it is even. Turn to the right side. We are not sewing next to the seam on the mask, but on the bias binding itself. About 1-2mm to two millimeters away from the edge. This is to make sure we catch the bias binding on the other side. Backstitch. And backstitch. Repeat the whole binding process on the other edge.
This is optional and Lois Barb will give it better fit. Neaten off the edges. We're going to bind the edges with binding cut on the straight grain. You can use leftover bias binding but it might not fold nicely. Make sure that if you're working with print that it is the right way up. Right side touching right side. Match at the raw edges. Leave enough fabric hanging off both ends. Stitch 1cm seam allowance. That's 1 eighth of an inch. Back stitch. And back stitch. Then I fold over to the wrong side of the mask. Most people fold this way. But I find it may catch when I thread the elastic. I like to fold it this way. I like to fold this edge down first. Then over and over. So when you thread through the correct layer, it will not catch. Repeat the whole binding process on the other edge. Turn to the right side. Edge stitch on the right side of the bias binding. Back stitch about one to two millimeters away from the edge. This is to make sure we catch the bias binding on the other side. Then back stitch. Repeat the whole binding process on the other edge. Some people might think this way is a bit tedious and always try to find a quick option. Some people say it's easier to add extra length to the sides so you don't bind it, suggesting to fold edges twice to trap the elastic before edge stitching and eliminate binding altogether. I don't mind you adapting my patterns to whatever works for you, but I am trying to show different processes in producing this design of mask so that you guys can learn some new skills to apply to your other projects. Quick is not an option. You could always trap your elastic in here before you sew. You just run the risk of sewing over the elastic if it was too wide. You can use a hair grip or a bobby pin to thread your elastic. Another tool is a bodkin. but I always revert to using my trusty ruler loop turner. It makes it so easy. Always check the length of elastic before tying off. Seal with a flame to stop it from fraying. So that's it. Place your filters and you are good to go. Here's an option to consider if you're using thick or wide elastic. The overhead and neck straps to help take the strain off the ears. To be honest, if it's elastic straps and not tying ones, then it is best to wear both elastics on the head, crossing at the sides. What I mean is the bottom elastic sits over the top elastic.
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe or follow for more from me at Shani Makes. Here's a little gift for you. You can keep all your patterns organised. Download this envelope from our website. See you next time.